Howdy, this here's Paul again, and we're fixing to have us another little Sunday school lesson here. Uh, the title of today's lesson is Jesus' Prayer for His Disciples, and that text comes out of John 17, 6 through 19. Uh, these related scriptures are John 35 through 40, uh, John 17, 1 through 5, and then John 17, 20 through 26. So just the whole chapter of John chapter 17 uh, is a good read. Uh, I tell you these related scriptures because they, they, they give the foundation to the lesson. And it gives you before and after and context always rules. So I'm going to pray and then I'm going to read the text and then I'm going to try to expound on a little bit now. <clears throat> Lord God, we thank you for this privilege of uh, coming to the throne of grace, Lord God. We thank you for prayer, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord God, for all the blessings you have bestowed upon us, Lord God. We thank you for all the miracles that you have worked in our lives, Lord God. And we just praise your holy name, Lord God. And Lord, we just pray that as we open your word today that it falls on good ground, Summers. And Lord God, that uh, somebody hears this and somebody uses this and somebody falls in love with Jesus, Lord God. And could submits their life to him. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Now, John uh, chapter 17, starting in verse 6 and following, says, I have manifested thy name unto men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine, were, <clears throat> thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now, they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee, for I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all are mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, those that thou gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come I thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. And I have given them thy word, that the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through your, thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so I have also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they might also be sanctified through truth. Well... Yeah. Like I said, uh, the name of this lesson is called Jesus' Prayer for the Disciples. Let me get down here to my notes. All righty. Now, have you ever asked somebody to pray for you? Or have you been had somebody uh, asked you to pray? Have you ever been heartened by the fact that Jesus is praying for you? It's also encouraging to know that he prays for us. John records the longest prayer of Jesus in the Bible, which he prayed the night before he was crucified. And in this prayer, he thanked the Father for his disciples, and he asked them to strengthen them. He loved these men and sought God's protection for them. Now, it's very special to see that in what was a, a very tense time in Jesus' life, he was thinking about his followers. He was not spending his final evening in isolation. Instead, he was focused on the needs of his disciples and glorifying his father. Jesus never lost 
excuse me, Jesus never lost sight of the fact that his mission was about redeeming people and saving the saving those who love him. Now today's lesson, we aim to study the manner in which Jesus Christ prays before his death. And we aim to know that we are never alone in this world because the Holy Spirit lives in us and Christ is praying for us to the Father. Does that not excite you to know that Jesus is praying for you specifically? And we need to aim to live in full awareness that Christ goes with us when he sends us out. See, you ain't never by yourself. One of the great and perhaps most overlooked aspects of the life of Jesus Christ is his prayer, is his prayer life. Uh, the gospel writers regularly record Jesus in prayer. Uh, many of his, prayers, uh, of his prayers are not recorded in the Bible, but this week's text is an exception. Uh, in his high priestly prayer, uh, John provides us with at least a summary of what Jesus prayed the night before his crucifixion. And not surprisingly, his disciples were among the first things on his mind. Jesus stated that he had made his father, father's name known to the disciples. He revealed God's character and nature to the 12 men he had chosen. The Father had separated them from the world and given them to Jesus, and in turn, he taught them about the Father, that they might know him and love him. Jesus' teaching about the Father led him to keep God's word. This was not an attempt to earn his favor, but resulted from their faith in Jesus. They certainly believed that he was sent by God, they believed uh, 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 and, and acted in faith. They followed him and learned to obey his commandments. They were obviously not perfect in speech or conduct, but they genuinely sought to please Christ. Although they were far from a finished product, God was still working on them, and Christ was preparing them for the work that lay ahead. See, that's what all these lessons are, is, is preparing you for the work that is going to be coming at us. And while it's true that God loves the world, that's John 3, 16, and that Jesus prayed for unbelievers on the cross, Luke 23 through 34, or excuse me, Luke chapter 23, verse 34, this prayer was for those whom he called to be separate from the world. All believers belong to the Father, and the Father has given them to his Son. Now in turn, Jesus is glorified in every person who believes in him. We glorify Christ by trusting him and obeying his word. Believers in Christ are kept by the power of God. Our works do not add to our salvation, nor do they deprive, uh, provide another dimension of God's grace to us. We are kept completely and solely by the power of the Lord. We are totally helpless without him. And that's a fact that you have to come to grips with. Jesus, of course, is no longer here in bodily form since he returned to the Father. And believers now represent Jesus to the world we live in. In uh, 2 Corinthians 5.20, we are not alone. However, as the Father has sent the Holy Spirit to live with us, that's John 14.15-17, Jesus asked his Father to keep the disciples in his name. Now there's power in the name of the Lord that cannot be surpassed by any of the worldly forces around us. Any. Not just some. That's all. Now if God's grace is strong enough to save us. Then it's strong enough to keep us. And I prayed we're going to have to depend more on Jesus. Ever, uh, ever more every day in the future. And the only one of Jesus's followers who is lost is the son of perdition that's in verse 12 and he's he's refer, reference to judas iscariot now judas willingly betrayed jesus 
and showed that he never truly put his faith in him. But however, his betrayal fulfills scripture, uh, namely Psalms 41, 9. But he chose his path. It wasn't forced on him. Just like Jesus ain't forced on nobody. And Jesus spoke these words so that the believer's joy would be full. A joy he promised in chapter 16. There you go again, telling you about reading uh, the related scriptures. Uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea for you to open that thing up and read it from cover to cover at least one time. <clears throat> now, we will certainly need to see. Uh, the joy he promised in chapter 16, verse 22, uh, which we certainly need when we experience the hardship of the world. The world is a hard place. Uh, we should especially know this joy when we realize that Christ has forgiven us of all our sins and equipped us to do his work. See, that's what the whole thing is about. It's, we're in a training program. Uh, you just keep training every day for the next job God has for you. Although Jesus has given us his word to live by, the world hates us because it hates him. Christians are not of the world, but have been chosen by God for his purpose. Now the world has rejected God, so it in turn hates and rejects those whom God chooses. Now see, the enemy can't do nothing to, the, to God, so he has to attack his followers. Although the world has... Uh, was hostile to the disciples, Jesus did not pray that God would take them out of the world. Instead, he prayed God would keep them from Satan. They would all suffer, and most of them would die for the gospel message they proclaimed. But Jesus' first concern was their spiritual warfare. He prayed that they would be sanctified by truth. Now, sanctify means to be set apart, but it's also closely associated with holiness. Christ sets believers apart to, uh, according to his word, and he has sent us into the world to proclaim the gospel to the lost. You need to tell somebody every day what Jesus has done for you. Now, I'm going to tell you, you're going to get resistance. You're going to have people uh, push past you, uh, cuss you out, and you're going to have people do all kind of mean things, but just that one that hears you, one that hears you and that seed is planted in their heart, that's, that's our, that is our total aim. Our sanctification, uh, sanctifica that's a big word. Our sanctification is possibly, is possible only because Jesus set himself apart for the work of the cross. See, without the Jesus and the cross, we wouldn't have any chance whatsoever. So now, knowing that Jesus is praying for us should free us to go out and do his will in the world. Does it, does it not excite you to know that Jesus is praying for you today? He's calling your name in every prayer for you. You know, we can take comfort in the fact that Jesus is praying for us as we speak. He is our high priest who goes to God for us. He intercedes on our behalf. He never leaves us and is always pleading our case to the Father, seeking our protection and equipping us to go out into a world that is predisposed to hate. Then we could not know God without Jesus, and in him we can call God our Father. So I want to I wanna challenge you today to read your Bible, and spend some time in prayer. Because if it was important as it was to Jesus, that means it ought to be that important to us. Just sit down and talk to the Father. 
climb up in his lap and talk to him like you would your daddy or whoever was your you know close to in your life you know i realize some some dad